So how much power can you get from a rain gutter? Our first attempt with a DC generator was barely enough to light an LED. In part two, we made our own 3D printed alternator, which boosted the power by a factor of three, enough to light several LEDs. Now we're going to try improving the nozzle and turbine to see if we can generate a full watt of electricity. The original nozzle was just a hole we drilled in a pipe. But industrial Pelton systems use a precision nozzle that's adjustable for flow rate. To make our own, we're modeling the vertical pipe in CAD with a new horizontal section for our nozzle. The nozzle opening will slide in one end with an adjustable needle that screws in from the back. The needle needs to stay as centered as possible, so we're adding a thin perforated support to the back of the nozzle. After documenting their critical dimensions, it's time to machine some parts. Okay, we've got the new machine nozzle installed, but it really hasn't changed the power output very much. We're still running a little over seven volts and almost 90 milliamps. So that nozzle really wasn't much of an improvement over just the drilled hole in the pipe. But check out what's going on. We still have a bunch of water flying off of here with some pretty good velocity, which is just wasted energy that we're not capturing. So we're gonna try changing the geometry of the Pelton wheels, print a couple of new ones, and see if we can turn more of that energy into electricity. Looking at pictures online, we see that many commercial Pelton wheels have different shaped buckets than what we're using. Fortunately, 3D modeling software lets us design any shape we want. Of course, if we had unlimited time and resources, we could use simulation software to optimize a turbine for our conditions, but instead, we're going to try tweaking a few key features, 3D print some samples, and look for any changes in the power output. Okay, I've been messing around with turbines for about three weeks, and I want to take you through what I've learned. So here are two of the original design that we printed, and then here's one with that more squared off bucket design. Uh, did a large and a small version of that. And then here's one with basically the same design of bucket, but just went with larger to try to handle maybe the higher flow. And then we've got one where it did a greater number of the same original bucket design around the diameter, along with one that had fewer without changing the diameter. And then smaller buckets doing uh, a greater number and smaller number per revolution. And then I thought, okay, maybe we're just using the wrong style altogether and went to something called a turgo turbine, which is basically a Pelton wheel cut in half and has the advantage of being able to handle like double the flow. And of course did a large and a small version of that. 
then okay, maybe we're just using the wrong kind of turbine by using an impact turbine because our head pressure is so low. Let's try a cross flow turbine and did a large, medium, and a small, which was great until I accidentally stepped on it. But the results are in. I've tried all of these on there on the alternator with the same water flow rate across it, and none of them could even match the original performance of the first Pelton wheel design, which is absolutely nuts. That never happens that the first thing that you try is the best, but that's what happened here. Now, looking at micro hydro applications online, you see a lot of them have multiple nozzles scattered around the diameter of the Pelton wheel to kind of spread out the water. And honestly, if you look at the high speed camera footage, it kind of looks like our Pelton wheel might be getting overwhelmed with too much water. So it might just be the thing we need is to use multiple nozzles and spread that out around the Pelton wheel but we're not even gonna bother with CAD this time. We're just gonna grab some metal and start machining. Okay, it's a good thing I like making stuff because that didn't help at all. In fact, it made it worse. But there's something else I've been dying to try since day one that we're going to do right now. As you know, 3D printers make stuff in layers that often leave rough lines on the surface. But we want our turbine as smooth as possible. Fortunately, there's something we can do about it but we have to switch from the PLA material we've been using to something called ABS. It's harder to work with, which for me means a bunch of failed prints, but once you get the temperature and supports figured out, it prints pretty well. Using an old pot with a glass lid, we're adding a tablespoon or two of acetone. Acetone melts ABS, so to keep the liquid from touching the part, we're putting it on a metal stand. Now this can work at room temperature, but goes way faster if we heat it. We'll use my improvised coffee warmer since it's all ready to go. Yes, acetone is flammable, but we're not going to heat it that much. Ah, crap. Looks like the heat melted the buckets because they're so thin. Okay, eight hours to print another one, and then try it again without the heat. But let's stick some paper towels to the sides with magnets to make sure we get plenty of vapors. Oh no, look at it! So it wasn't the heat. I guess if the part is thin enough, the acetone can distort it all by itself. Turns out cycling 20 minutes in and out several times gets the job done without distorting the part. Okay, let's see if we made any headway with this thing. Finally, some improvement, but still less than 700 milliwatts. 
Oh. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this, but we need mythical level performance. Of course, not all fidget spinners are created equal, so let's spin them all up to see which ones go the longest and have the least amount of friction. Then we can pull the bearings and swap them into our alternator. We just need to remove the shaft and machine it down to fit the smaller bearings. I can't wait to get this thing back together and give it a spin. Look at this. I can't believe how easily this thing spins and it just keeps going forever. <laughs> With these old uh, sealed bearings, the thing would just come to a stop relatively quickly from all the additional friction of that little rubber seal. But look at this thing. It's just like a fidget spinner. I've made this alternator, I don't know what you'd want to call it, this alternator fidget spinner. This has to result in greater power coming off of that uh, rain generator setup because there's just so much less energy being lost to friction. I gotta hook this thing up and see what it's gonna do. This is incredible. Okay, we've done just about everything we could possibly do to maximize the amount of power we can get out of this rain gutter. We 3D printed a custom alternator and installed fidget spinner bearings, machined an adjustable nozzle, and installed a 3D printed Pelton wheel with acetone smoothing to take off those ridges. And currently we're getting about 105 milliamps at 7.8 volts, which is over 800 milliwatts or 0.8 watts. Now, that's not quite the full watt that we were hoping for, but it's pretty darn good. And at this point, we have put so much effort into this thing, I think it's time to try charging some batteries. In fact, that's what we're going to do in part four, is set up a charging station here, complete with a USB output, so we can bring out a couple of different household accessories and see how much power we can store. Now, if that kind of thing sounds cool to you, I need you to please like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. But either way, I'm Quint with another one of my builds. Thanks for watching.